know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. The statue of Kala Ghoda, after which the area around it is named, is a familiar sight for all those who visit the old commercial centre of Mumbai. But most don't really know how this statue and its placement here tells the story of the revival and transformation of this historic precinct. Did you know that the original Kala Ghoda was shunted out of here because it was seen as a symbol of the city's colonial past? In 1965, this statue which originally had King Edward VII astride this Kala Ghora or Black Horse was removed from here to Rani Bagh in Baikla and it was only reinstated in 2017, albeit without Edward VII atop it. So why is that? Well, it's thanks to one of the most inspirational restoration efforts that saw the local residents of the Old Fort area get together to save this historic part of Old Bombay and restore it to all its former glory. How they did it over the last 20 odd years has been really fabulous. Artist Brinda Miller has been closely associated with the Kala Ghoda Association since its establishment in 1998. Today, she is a part of it. The association organizes Mumbai's most popular street festival, the Kala Ghoda Arts Festival, in the beginning of February every year. These activities also fund all the public restoration work here. The Kalagoda Association was formed uh, in uh, 1998 and this was uh, just a group of few citizens, people from the area who uh, said that let's make this area into a sort of little, uh, you know, maybe there can be a weekend uh, event or, but somehow the festival happened and uh, it was also, we wanted to restore and when I say we, I wasn't there at that time, but I still uh, felt at that time that uh, we that it should be one of those areas which should be restored because uh, these people who formed the association they uh, you know there were some people who lived at Churchgate or they lived they had an office in Kalagoda in the area in the district so they felt that uh, let's restore it make it a better place let people get aware that there are these beautiful buildings and uh, let's have this festival, we'll put aside some money from the sponsorship, we will create a sort of corpus and we will uh, restore these old buildings. And uh, every year we felt that uh, we are not going to be able to do this next year because the money is not coming in. But somehow I think uh, this place has a, some kind of positive energy and uh, each year it kind of snowballed into something better and better and better and uh, money started coming in and we've done a lot of uh, very very important projects which have won uh, you know UNESCO awards and uh, the area has been restored as you as everyone knows and can see I don't think they even remember that it was not a area to uh, be reckoned with and the association has worked very hard together to form this uh, beautiful district. The restoration of Kala Ghoda and its transformation into a historic precinct has to be seen in two contexts. First, how the Kala Ghoda festival evolved and second, how the money raised from it funded the restoration of the buildings around it. This happened in two phases. The purpose with which the association was established amongst many other aims and objects, but the basic purpose was twofold. One was the refurbishment and the repairs in the Heritage Art District, which was Kala Ghoda. And the second was that once you did that, to create it as a cultural hub. So the first thing was that they started with, we started with a small festival over weekends and in the evenings, and largely a music festival. And slowly, slowly, slowly it grew, uh, it, it had its own momentum 
Uh, if you ask somebody 20 years ago what shape the festival would take, it would have been very difficult at that time to say that it would have reached the proportions that it has reached today. And we have used the surpluses which we have got from the festival for the upkeep of the Heritage Art District, which was also our primary aim. So of the many projects which we have done apart from Elphinstone College building is the David Sassoon Library, the museum, the Bombay Natural History Society. We have put the horse back in Kala Ghoda. We have done the Bamanji Vadya Clock Tower in Bazar Gate Street. We have done the Bunji Jetha Fountain, which is at Fort Market. We have just now refurbished the DCP's office at uh, VT, opposite the railway station. We have contributed to the St. Thomas Cathedral. We have contributed to the uh, synagogue next door. So it's an exercise that we have undertaken over these past uh, many years. It's hard to imagine, but back lanes of what is Kala Ghoda were once filled with small cubbyhole offices of trading agencies and lawyers. Thanks to the proximity of the port behind and the Bombay High Court nearby. 83-year-old Kamal Parikh first came here in 1962. He says things were very different then. At that time, no ladies alone after 7 o'clock would dare to walk alone. It was completely a druggist lane. And when I used to go home, I used to see quite a few people just lying down on the road and things like that. The neighbourhood started changing from the 1990s and the area developed as new changes came about. Today, the old trading office that Parikh acquired in 1962 has been turned into a studio and store set up by his daughter Radhi Parikh, who has worked in San Francisco and London and has seen old neighbourhoods develop into heritage precincts. I was at that time uh, living and working in San Francisco and prior to that, I'd worked in Covent Garden in the publishing industry in London and, you know, worked in spaces where the back streets had, had, re uh, had undergone a revitalization. Covent Garden, especially in the 90s, in the late 80s and the 90s, went from becoming this very seedy area into becoming an area where designers moved in, Beca uh, and made it their space in rather unknown streets that were the back streets of uh, the area around Trafalgar Square, which was better known. And both of these uh, areas that went through an amazing research resurgence with artists and designers first having the vision for how those neighborhoods could change to what they are today, 30 years later, which are really high street. So in seeing the potential of this building in the back streets of Kala Goda, um, those were my frames of reference. Transforming a historic area into a heritage precinct has multiple layers. The first being the restoration of the public buildings, the second being reviving public spaces, and the third is getting the right businesses in the area. And Radhi believes that a turning point for the precinct was when the Kala Ghora Cafe and designer Sabya Sachi's store opened here. I think it was that decision of having Sabya Sachi downstairs that changed who came uh, next to the neighborhood. So the Delhi Art Gallery then uh, rented from uh, what was uh, the Ambani's building uh, across from us. There was already Muse, which was a shop where just next door to us, which was a completely restored neoclassical building. And Muse uh, had invited a lot of the global luxury brands to Bombay. So it was a mix of the global luxury brands and some of the upcoming emerging Indian designers. The only other um, uh, space that was aligned to what we were thinking and doing was Kala Goda Cafe. I think it started in 2009 or 10. So um, these were the three spaces that kind of were aligned to each other at that time. 
the revival of a precinct like this and the organization of a festival has substantially increased the number of people visiting it, both local and foreign. This has had a very positive impact on local businesses, helping them expand and grow. The support of the businesses around it has also been vital for the festival's growth. This includes Chetna, one of the oldest eateries in the precinct. We collaborated with them because we thought it was a very good idea. But many of the other businesses resisted the idea of blocking the road because they said that it will affect their business. But we had a long-term view in the sense that we want Bombay to have the kind of charisma that you see in cities abroad. And this, this, this precinct lends itself very, very well to that. So we, uh, we, we helped them right to the hilt and encouraged them. We opened a snack stall outside and uh, they were very encouraged. So you had a very interesting mix of people and this was a very rare place where people like you and me could actually go and feel comfortable and be happy to be in the outdoors, right? And eat hygienic food. The revival of Kala Ghora is an ongoing process and each year has new challenges. Holding an activity the size of the Kala Ghora Arts Festival isn't an easy task. The festival had more than 400 events last year with half a million visitors attending it. For the same, sorting out the logistics, getting the agreements of the local businesses and residents, as well as getting the permissions requires sustained effort. This is accomplished by the Kala Ghora Association which works around the year tirelessly to get it done. It has been a difficult journey uh, and we have also had to get the local residents and the local offices to buy into the festival. It does disrupt uh, business, but the benefits of it have, are far outweighed the inconveniences. There are so many people who come to India specifically that time of the festival and there are so many people who come to Mumbai because of the festival. So, uh, what are the strengths of the festival? One is that it's completely uh, inclusive. And that's not only in terms of demographics in the sense that we have everything for children to senior citizens. Not only in the terms of an economic strata because anybody and everybody can come and enjoy what we have, the experiences that we have, uh, but in every aspect. And for that, we also have to thank the participants, the performers who perform for us. And uh, yes, it has been a tough journey. As I was mentioning it to you earlier, I once spent about nine months in court because a local resident had gone and complained and uh, these processes did take time. Even now, we go to court to seek permission to hold the dance and music section in Cross Maidan. We had to shift the uh, performances to Cross Maidan because A, the pressures of people, the public was becoming, the numbers were becoming unmanageable on the street. Uh, we couldn't hold up uh, a part of the street for performances and this area became a silent zone. The Kala Ghora Festival has also served as an inspiration for other precincts and cities who have started holding festivals and events on similar lines. The contribution which Kala Ghora has made, especially the festival, is very broad. Firstly, it has set a standard for uh, cultural activity. So there are so many other festivals across Mumbai, if not across the country, which follow the pattern of Kala Ghora. You have a festival in Thana, you have a festival in Navi Mumbai, you have a festival in Bandra, you have a festival in Worldly. And that, we feel, is a, is a very, very good thing because the more there is of culture, the less there is of strife, the less there is of, uh, you know, and it is a very natural and a very pleasant pressure valve for people and families. The association, founded by visionaries like Jamshed Kanga, Raul Merotra, Shirin Bharucha has come a long way since the first festival in 1999 and the restoration of the Elphinstone College in 2001-2002. The work of the Kala Ghora Association isn't done yet as it continues to grow and break new ground. We want to keep the uh, entire precinct alive throughout the year 
And it's not just about the awareness of the buildings and what work we are doing. We also want to make it uh, active, which we already, of course, have succeeded in doing. And we can see that, uh, and when I say we, it's the Kalagoda Association. We see how, uh, you know, this place has become known, not just uh, culturally, and not just uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of art galleries are here, but we also want to see to it that it's uh, a place where people come and they enjoy themselves throughout the year. A lot of uh, people uh, talk about Kalagoda as uh, not just a business district, not just as a uh, sort of architectural, you know, the buildings are not just architectural marvels. They also talk about what lovely restaurants there are, what lovely stores there are, how uh, it's such a lovely place for young people. Actually, we want to make it as young as possible. So in the future, I would like to see Kalagoda, the area, have, uh, you know, retain its old charm. But at the same time, I would love to see it um, kind of buzzing with uh, younger activities, with different kinds of activities, I'm sure that perception will change over the years and uh, I think we've been quite successful at doing that. I would also like to see a lot more things happening on the street and I would like of course the help of the government and uh, to do that where we can uh, kind of activate it every weekend. We would love to activate the streets every weekend and uh, we would love a lot of people to come and volunteer to do that also and help us with this wonderful cause called Kalagoda. Today, the Kalagoda precinct in the city of Mumbai is synonymous with art, culture and heritage. Its revival is a great example of how people-driven movements can change the face of our cities for the better. It is also a great example of how the historic built fabric of the city and its cultural life can be revived through sustained efforts.